Nu was the name of the dark swirling chaos before the beginning of time. Out of these waters rose a tomb. Self created using thoughts and sheer force of will, a tomb created a hell, but there was no place to stand. A tomb was alone in the world. A tomb was neither male nor female, and had one all seeing eye that had roamed the universe. A tomb joined with a tomb's shadow to produce a son and a daughter. A tomb gave birth to a son by spitting him out and named him Shu, God of the Air. A tomb vomited up his daughter and named her Tefna, Goddess of Mist and Moisture. Shu and Tefna were given the task of separating the chaos into the principles of law and order and stability. The chaos was divided into light and dark and set into place. This order was called Ma'at, which formed the principles of life for all time. Ma'at was a feather and was light and pure. Shu and Tefnut produced Jeb, the earth, and Nut, the sky. At first, these two were tangled together as one. Shu, god of the air, pushed Nut up into the heavens. There she would remain, arch over Jeb, her mate. They longed to be together, but in the name of Ma'at, they had to be apart from their functions. Nut produced rain for Jeb, and Jeb made things grow on earth. As the sky, Nut gave birth to the sun every night before dawn, and by day it would follow its course over the earth and die at sunset. Shu and Tefnut produced the other gods. Isis, Queen of the Gods, Hathor, Goddess of Love and Beauty, Osiris, God of Wisdom and Justice, Set, God of Evil, Thoth, God of Wisdom and Righteousness, Nephthys, Goddess, Protectress of the Dead. The chaos was still vast and not yet fully separated from the altar of Ma'at. Shu and Tefnut once got lost in the dark waters of Nu. Atum was desperate to find Shu and Tefnut. Atum sent the all-seeing eye throughout the heavens and earth to search for them. In time, Shu and Tefnut returned with the eye. Atum saw them and wept tears of joy. As these tears hit the earth, they became the first men. As the men populated the earth, they had to uphold the truth and balance of Ma'at. They had the task of tending the earth and honoring the gods. The gods, in turn, protected and loved their creation. Thoth created five days of 70% of the earth of each part of the moon's illumination. In addition to the 360 days, these days are the birthdays of the gods. On the first of these days, Osiris was born, and a loud voice was heard saying, The king of all advances towards the lights. On the second of these days, Arius, aka Apollo or the Elder Hell Horus. On the third of these days, Seth was born, aka Typhoon or Seti. He broke through his mother's side and leaped out. On the fourth of these days, Isis was born in the regions that are ever moist. On the fifth day, Nephthys was born. Nephthys became the wife of Seth. Isis and Osiris were enamored with each other and consorted with each other in the womb. The first act of Osiris was to relieve the people of their destitute and brutish manner of living. 
Osiris showed people about the fruits of cultivation of agriculture, law, and music. Osiris traveled the whole earth, civilized it, without the need of weapons. Osiris persuaded people with his charm and music, personality, and dance. Osiris, one night, in his confusion, thinking it was Isis, consorted, made love with Nephthys. Nephthys, becoming pregnant, told her husband Seth. While Osiris was away, Seth did not try to attack because Isis was in control. When Osiris returned, Seth plotted against him with 72 co-conspirators. He also had in cooperation a queen from Ethiopia. Seth secretly measured Osiris and created a beautiful chest, human-sized and artistically ornamented. Seth brings the chest and places it in the place of festivals or the party. All of those at the festivities admire the chest. Seth promised to give the chest to whomever fit to exact size when they lay down in it. They all tried in turn but none fit in. Osiris got in and laid down. Those who were in the conspiracy slammed the chest closed. They fastened the chest, closing it using nails and molten lead. They carried the chest to the river and threw it in. When Isis heard of this, she began to mourn and weep. Isis began to search for the chest. Isis did not fail to address anyone she saw. Isis asked little children if they had seen the chest. The children had seen it at the mouth of the river. Isis found out that Osiris had consorted with Nephthys and Nephthys for a child. Isis looked for that child for it had been abandoned and by the help of dogs she found it. The child was brought up and became her attendant. The child was named Anubis. Isis learned that the chest had been cast by the sea in a clump of heather. The heather grew into a massive tree and hid the chest in its trunk. The king of the land saw the tree and cut it down and used it as a pillar in his home. Isis found out through rumor and went to Bibis, the king, his home, and said nothing. Isis cried and had good smells. She braided the hair of the helpers and she became friends with the stepmother to the queen. Isis nursed the queen's baby and turned into a swallow. As the child was surrounded by a protective fire burning away the mortal portions of the child, the queen saw this not knowing and screamed and also depriving the child of its immortality. Isis asked for a pillar supporting the house. She took the pillar down with the greatest of ease, removing the tree bark and the heather. Isis then laid down the chest and she threw herself on him and let out such a well and so loud and so horrible that one of the king's sons died on the spot. The eldest son she kept with her and she put him on a boat and went. When she found a seclusion, she opened the chest 
and laid her face upon the face of Osiris and wept. The child happened upon her and saw her, and when she saw him, she gave him one awful look of anger. The child could not endure the fright and died. Isis went to her son, Anubis, who was being raised in a birthday. She hid the chest. Seth happened to find it by the light of the moon and cut the body of Osiris into fourteen parts and scattered them into different places. Isis heard of this and searched for the body parts on a boat. The only part of Osiris she did not find was the male member, for it was tossed in a river and eaten by fish. Isis made a replica and put it in his place and consecrated with the body. Later, Osiris came back to see Horus. Osiris asked Horus what he held most noble. Horus answered to avenge one's parents for evils done to them. Osiris then asked Horus what animal is best to use when going off to battle? And when Horus said a horse, Osiris was surprised and said, Why not a lion? Horus said that a lion was a good thing to have in case of a man in need of insistence. But a horse is better for cutting off your enemy's path and annihilating him. When Osiris heard this, he was pleased, for he said Horus was ready for war. Horus and Seth were set for war, and one of Seth's concubines came to Horus, and a giant serpent followed Horus, and then he chopped up the snake. The battle between Seth and Horus lasted many days, but Horus was the victor and won. At one point in the battle, Seth snatched out an eye of Horus, and at another point in the battle, Horus removed Seth's testicles, castrating him. Horus delivered Seth to Isis in chains. Isis did not put him to death, but she released him. Horus did not like this and went to Isis. Seth openly accused Horus of being an illegitimate child. But with the help of Thoth and the plea of his case, Horus was declared legitimate. Seth was then defeated in two other battles. Horus told his mother Seth was killed.